Hurricane Hutch's Top Ten Ships of the Clyde. Written by Captain Robin L. Hutchison. Narrated by Bill Patterson. In this book, I've tried to give you my own personal take on a slowly fading era on the Clyde. When I first started work in the steamers, it was in the late 50s, and the Caledonian Steam Packet Company ships were still an integral part of life for the dozens of coastal communities that hugged the Clyde estuary. The boats were built to cater for a range of needs. In peak season, a crowded boat could have upwards of a thousand passengers on board. There were passengers commuting to and from the thriving industrial towns, there were people using the boats to reach their holiday destinations, and those simply seeking a great day out. People sometimes fail to appreciate just how wide a social mix used our services. The well-to-do and the not-so-well-to-do all enjoyed using the boats, and the ships therefore provided a mix of comfort, speed and affordability. The boats ranged from the well-loved paddlers to the more functional car ferries. One summer I ended up master on 18 different boats in 21 days, one minute handling paddlers, the next turbines, and then on to the motor vessels, each with their own characteristics and idiosyncrasies. My rotors required me to join a new ship each day and meant me scurrying backwards and forwards between Ardrossan, Ayr, Craigendorn, Gourock, Fairley, and central Glasgow. I just about wore out a car trying to meet the schedules. It's probably worth pointing out that we saw quite a difference between services and cruises. Services were scheduled runs linking the towns and piers on the coast and strictly timetabled to connect with trains at different railheads. These trips were primarily about delivering people and goods to specific places at specific times, a vital mode of transportation to communities that depended upon us almost entirely. Cruises, on the other hand, were full or half-day excursions that allowed us some flexibility and gave people the opportunity to enjoy a relaxed day out in the river while also experiencing some of the finest scenery and freshest air in the country. During the peak summer months, the company operated a complex timetable interweaving both types of sailings, and the boats might have to switch between rolls several times during a single day. As time went by, however, this timetable was gradually modified to take account of the growing dominance of the car, and when I retired in 1995, it was from a Calmac that had become overwhelmingly a ferry service, shuttling cars and passengers from A to B. Its role and ethos had completely changed. I had, however, also now become part of an organisation that dominated the sea routes of almost the entire west coast of Scotland. We provided lifeline services to over 45 west coast ports and island communities, and indeed, by the time I retired, the company was carrying some five million passengers and well over a million cars, commercial vehicles and coaches every year. My time on the Clyde therefore bears witness to this transformation. On the one hand, the gradual decline of the paddle steamer, with its elegant dining saloons, linen tablecloth, silver cutlery and genteel tea rooms, offering lazy summer cruises through stunning scenery. And on the other, the emergence of a fleet of powerful roll-on, roll-off car ferries, capable of carrying the largest possible number of cars and commercial vehicles in the shortest possible time. But don't get me wrong. This is not simply a celebration of the past and a teary-eyed wallow in nostalgia. I enjoyed being in charge of the larger modern vessels like the 4,500-ton Caledonian Isles, serving Arran, and bringing in pioneering innovations such as Foyt Schneider propulsion on the Streakers, the nickname for a new class of vessel introduced in the early 70s. In many respects, this was an exciting time of change. My list of the top ten ships of the Clyde is personal, 
and it brings together all these disparate strands. It's from my own experience and intimate working knowledge of over 30 individual vessels and their crews that formed the Clyde fleet over some 35 years. This book is about the Clyde as a living, breathing workplace. <laughs>